He first attained self enlightenment. Self enlightenment refers to enlightening oneself. Enlightening oneself means that he himself obtained great wisdom. Then he enlightened others. He caused other people to also attain great wisdom. That's called the enlightenment of others. And when he had attained great wisdom himself and enabled others to also attain great wisdom, he is said to have the perfection of enlightenment and practice the third type of enlightenment. The three kinds of enlightenment are perfected and the ten thousand virtues are complete. Therefore, he is called Buddha. Buddhas are those who have attained the unsurpassed, proper and equal right enlightenment. So they are also called greatly enlightened ones and greatly wise ones. So the text says, proper enlightenment cannot be measured. For as many living beings as there are, there are equal number of Buddhas. Buddhas just come from living beings. Therefore, it's not certain how many Buddhas there are. If you don't believe this, try to calculate a little. If we only consider the human realm, just how many human beings are there on earth, you could try to get the total number, but even if you could determine the total number of living beings in this world at a given moment, you would discover that beings are constantly being born and dying, so it's hard to get the exact number. In the future, if you are able to figure out the total, you will still be faced with the more birth and death you won't be able to get an exact number. The past is also like this, therefore the number is limitless. Living beings are limitless and Buddhas are limitless. We people shouldn't think of Buddhas as being so far away from us. The Buddhas are right in front of us. Buddhas are living beings who have completely turned themselves around. They understand the mind and see the nature. They know how they got born and know how they will die. When they are born, they know where they came from, and when they die, they know where they are going. It's right at this point that Buddhas are different from us living beings. When we are born, we don't know where we came from, and when we die, we don't know where we are going. Coming, we are confused, and going, we are confused. We are busy fighting for fame and profit in the world, and yet just when you're about to understand, you die. Would you say this is spiritual or not? The, Bud the Buddhas are equal to the Dharma realm and empty space. The Buddhas, the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space are all alike. How big is empty space? The Buddha's Dharma body is that big too. However lofty the Dharma realm is, the Buddhas are also that lofty. The Buddhas are identical with the Dharma realm and the realm of empty space. Proper enlightenment is unfathomable in its depth and vastness. If you are talking about depth, the Buddha's state is unfathomable. If you are talking about vastness, the Buddha's state doesn't have any boundaries or limits. Moreover, it is completely cut off from the path of words and language. Ultimately speaking, what are the Buddhas like? You can't express that in words and language. The path of words and language is cut off, and the place of the mind's activities is extinguished. This is the inconceivable state of Buddhas. The first common is skillfully able to penetrate. The Buddha can proficiently fathom all principles. He practices the way in every place. He cultivates and teaches and transforms living beings in every place. He can travel without obstruction to the multitudes of countries in the Dharma realm. Whatever place the Buddhas wish to go, in all of the Buddha lands in the ten directions of the Dharma realm, they can go too. There aren't any obstructions in their way. That is because the Buddhas are nowhere present and yet are nowhere not present. There isn't any place where the Buddhas do live. There isn't any place where the Buddhas do dwell. To the exhaustion of the wounds of the ten directions, the wisdom body of the Buddha exists. There isn't a single dust mold where all the Buddhas of the past, all the Buddhas of the present, and all the Buddhas of the future haven't sacrificed their lives to teach and transform living beings. 
Therefore, the Buddhas, in order to teach and transform living beings, sacrificed thousands of bodies without being grudging any. Now we not to speak of sacrificing our bodies to help living beings. Can't even give up a small finger to help living beings. We can't even pull out a single hair from our hands to aid living beings. If we could benefit everything under heaven by pulling out a single strand of hair, we still wouldn't do it because we are selfish. If we weren't so selfish, we'd open great wisdom. Sutra at that time, wisdom banner Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power. Universally contemplated the ten directions and spoke these verses. Commentary: Bright light, Banner Bodhisattva had finished speaking, praising the Buddha, praising the Dharma, and praising the Sangha. Then, at that time, again there was a Bodhisattva called Wisdom Banner Bodhisattva. Wisdom refers to his great wisdom. Banner represents the fact that his wisdom is just like a jeweled banner. Everywhere illumining the dark, ignorant minds of living beings, causing all living beings to attain the light of wisdom. Bodhisattva is a Sanskrit word which can mean both enlightened sentient beings and enlightened sentient being. Bodhisattva is enlightened both sentient and insentient beings, and are living beings who have attained enlightenment. You yourself will also become enlightened with wisdom if you wish to enlighten living beings. This Bodhisattva received the Buddha's spiritual power. Bright light banner Bodhisattva received Shakyamuni Buddha's great awesome spiritual power. Using all the great awesome spiritual power of the Buddhas of the ten directions and three periods of time, he universally contemplated the. Ten direction. He everywhere contemplated all of the causal conditions of living beings throughout the lands of the ten directions in great detail, deciding who should be crossed over. Then he spoke dharma for them, and so those living beings who ought to be crossed over, he spoke these verses. He used simple verses which are very easy to understand in order to speak the dharma for living beings. Vulnerable are both. If you have a question, you can bring it up and we'll discuss it. First questioner, you are talking about the root of greed and desire being selfishness. I was wondering where does selfishness come from? From ignorance. Where does ignorance come from? From the non enlightenment, non awakening, or non awakening. What makes me non awakened? Because you ignorant. You haven't awakened. If you could break through ignorance, then you'd be enlightened. Second question now: Since there are many different kinds of afflictions which are caused by ignorance, how is the the one who is afflicted to know what is the proper way to end his affliction? Since he is afflicted, he would be able to see his own afflictions. The back of your hand is affliction. And the palm of your hand is body. Realizing body is just like flipping your hand from back to palm. When you turn affliction around, it's body. Afflictions are the same as body. Birth and death are the same as nirvana. If you understand, then afflictions are body. If you don't understand, then body is affliction. Body is an outside of afflictions, and there are no afflictions outside the scope of enlightenment. So I constantly cite. The analogy of water and ice. If you pour a bowl of water over a person's body, even if you use a lot of strength, still you would hurt the person. However, if this bowl of water turns into ice, and you hit the person in the head with it, this person will certainly die. Body is just like water. Afflictions are like ice. If you melt ice, it becomes water. When you freeze water, it becomes ice. So afflictions are body, birth and death are nirvana. This is the principle. Today, many young students have come to investigate the Buddha Dharma, and I can transmit a Dharma of studying to you. The Dharma of studying has three parts. If you don't want to hear this message, you can block up your ear laughter. The three parts. 
are the eyes, mouth, and mind. The eyes, you read the book, you're studying with your eyes, and you recite with your mouth. You use your mind. You use your mind to ponder the principles of this book. If you can study a book this way, you can very quickly remember the contents. The principles contained in the book and your mind unite into one. This is very important. When studying, this is very important method. It's a very important method. Also, in addition to the eyes, mouth, and mind, there are the three ons. When it comes to studying, don't be afraid of being too stupid or too dumb. It's only to be feared that you won't work hard. If you work hard, then you'll eventually reach success. You can also use the three ons on the road when you're walking. You can recite out loud the book that you're studying. Two on the toilet when you're studying, still are unable to remember the contents of the book. Then, when you go to the toilet, think about the book that you're studying, and at that time, you can very quickly remember it. When you're going to the toilet, you don't have any false thinking. It's very easy to remember the book that you're studying. Three on the pillow. At night, when you're about to go to bed, as you lay your head on the pillow, don't have so many extraneous false thoughts. Don't think about boyfriend and girlfriend, old friend and young friends, all kinds of thoughts like this. As you lie there on the pillow, keep your head cool and lucid, and you can very easily recall the principles of the book you're studying. Therefore, at that time, it's very easy for you to mesh with the principle of the book. It's easy for you to understand it at this time. So this is the method for studying. Why do you study? You study in order to understand true principle. In order to increase your wisdom, that is why you study, because you want to acquire a little erudition, a little brains. If you want to acquire any learning, remember that it will be a great aid to developing your wisdom if you decrease the amount of your false thinking. You'll be able. You'll be able to develop wisdom very quickly because I I see that you are very sincere in coming here today. I decided to give you a brief outline of this method of studying. Not only is studying that way, learning to be a human being also requires adherence to a code of ethics. You have to abide by certain principles. You should ask yourself. Am I studying for my own benefit or for the sake of all people? If it's just for myself, then it will only be of benefit to me and not of benefit to other people. You should try to expand your mind and develop this kind of self fit, self, self knowledge. This kind of self knowledge, thinking a bit. If you expand your mind, your future will be bright without limit, as it is said. Sacrifice the small ego for the big self. Sutra: If a person can believe and receive all wisdom without obstruction, and if he cultivates Buddha practices, his mind will be limitless. Within all countries, the Buddha universally manifests measureless bodies. Yet, these bodies do not have a location, nor do they dwell in dharmas. Commentary: If a person can believe and receive all wisdom without obstruction, and if he cultivates Buddha practices, his mind will be limitless. If means supposing, wishing to further clarify his meaning, wisdom banner Bodhisattva brings up a hypothetical case. He says, suppose there is a person who can believe and uphold the Dharma spoken by the Buddha. The Buddha is all wisdom itself, and And the dharma spoken by the Buddha is one dharma of all wisdom, without obstruction, means perfectly fused without any hindrances. If he practices the dharma of awakening to the way body, then his mind will be limitless. Once you give rise to great mind for body, this mind becomes limitless and has no boundaries. It has no limit, no number. Within all countries, the limit of the mind is like the dormitorium. It's like empty space. 
So within all countries, the Buddha universally manifests measureless bodies. The Buddha in all the countries of the ten directions universally manifests measureless, wonderful form bodies, yet these bodies do not have a location. Although they are limitless, they are without a place of dwelling, nor do they dwell in dramas. Moreover, they don't come attached to dramas, so people are seen as empty and dramas are seen as empty. Because people are empty, this body doesn't dwell anywhere. And when dramas are empty, one doesn't dwell in dramas. When attachment to self and dramas are both emptied, one is totally apart from attachment. One is nowhere and everywhere at the same time. Sutra H and every Tathagata must appear bodies by means of spiritual powers. Throughout inconceivable compass, no calculations or reckonings can reach their end. As to all living beings of the three periods of time, their number can completely be known. But the number of bodies revealed by the first come ones cannot be ascertained. Sometimes they manifest one or two, but other times they meet these bodies. Although universally manifesting in lands of the ten directions, in fact, they are not two kinds. Commentary H and every Tathagata makes appear bodies by means of spiritual powers. This is speaking of all the Buddhas throughout the ten directions and three periods of time. Every Buddha has hundreds of thousands of millions of transformation bodies. This is to say, by means of spiritual penetrations, they can manifest these bodies. Through the Buddha's great or some spiritual power, these bodies manifested in infinite variety. So Wisdom Banner Bodhisattva goes on to say, throughout inconceivable compass, no calculations or reckonings can reach their end. Even if one uses calculations and analogies, the number of these Buddha's bodies still cannot be fathomed. As to all living beings of the three periods of time, their number can completely be known. They are Buddhas of the three periods of time, and they are also living beings of the three periods of time, that is, the past, present, and future. As to all these living beings, how many are there? Their number can still be known. It is re reckonable. But the number of bodies revealed by the first come ones cannot be ascertained. As to the bodies the Buddhas manifest, how many bodies are there? What is their number? They can't be reckoned. Wisdom Banner Bodhisattva continues, Sometimes they manifest one or two. Maybe the Buddhas will each manifest one body of a Buddha. Maybe they will manifest two bodies. At other times they will display limitless bodies and including a limitless number of Buddha's bodies. Also, universally manifesting in lands of the ten directions in fact, there are not two kinds. These bodies manifest everywhere throughout all Buddha lands within the ten directions. Yet, actually, there isn't any duality to the Buddha's Dharma body. The Buddhas don't have two bodies. Although they, that they manifest limitless bodies, it's just one Dharma body. From this one Dharma body appear limitless bodies. And limitless bodies return to the one Dharma body. That is why the Bodhisattva says they are not two kinds, they are non-dual. Sutra Consider, for instance, the pure full moon, which, I ever wear, which everywhere appears in all waters. Although its reflections are infinite, originally the moon isn't two. The same is true for one with an abstracted wisdom, who accomplishes equal proper enlightenment. Although he universally appears in all lands, the Buddha's substance is non-dual. It is neither one nor two. It is also not limitless, but merely a cause with those who should be transformed to display limitless bodies. Commentary. Consider, for instance, the pure full moon. Another analogy is used to explain the Buddha state. It is like the pure full moon in empty space which everywhere appears in all waters.
The light of the moon everywhere appears in all waters. This is not to say that the moon's own substance goes into the water. Rather, it's just a reflection of light. So there's a saying: One moon is universally reflected in all waters. All the reflections return to a single moon, and although its reflections are infinite, originally the moon isn't too. This reflection of moonlight appears in limitless waters. Although there are so many reflections, originally there is only one moon, not two. The Buddha is like the pure full moon. Although each living being feels that he or she is face to face with the Buddha, yet the Buddha has only one Dharma body. It is said, in the water of a thousand pools, a thousand moons appear. For ten thousand miles, there's not a cloud. For ten thousand miles, the sky is clear. The same is true for one with an abstracted wisdom, who accomplishes equal proper enlightenment. This wisdom is like the perfectly filled and unobstructed wisdom of a Buddha. It was due to this kind of wisdom that he was able to accomplish Buddhahood unsurpassed, proper and equal right enlightenment. Although he universally appears in all lands, the Buddha substance is non-dual. The Buddha accomplishes Buddhahood in this world, that world, and in measureless other worlds. So this line says, he universally appears in all lands. Yet, no matter how many worlds he manifests in to accomplish Buddhahood, the Buddha's basic substance is non-dual. It is neither one nor two. Not only is the Buddha's basic substance said to be non-dual, it isn't even one. If it's not even one, how can it be two? It is also not limitless. It's also not limitless or boundless. It's merely a manifestation. That's all. But merely a cause with those who should be transformed to display limitless bodies. The Buddha contemplates the causes and conditions of living beings and dispenses. The teachings by speaking drama for them, according to the rules and natures of living beings, he teaches and transforms them. Those who have not yet planted good rules, he causes to plant good rules. Those who already have planted good rules, he causes to increase their good rules. Those who have already increased their good rules, he causes to bring their good rules to maturity. Those. Whose gurus have already matured, he causes to attain liberation. According with those living beings who should be transformed, the Buddha displays limitless bodies. He makes appear measureless bodies to teach and transform living beings. He breaks their attachments and enables them to return to their true original source, and ultimately to become Buddhas. This is the Buddha's hope.